Welcome back to part two of Cape York Trip Prep. Today, this huge pile of gear to get through. May as well call me King Kenny. I've got that much King's gear aboard. It's uh, not high price, but a lot of gear. Four of those clear top canvas bags to go in the drawers. Two awning strip lights to go in the 270 awning. Uh, Javel, Javel, jack and shovel mount. 270 degree awning wall. What's that? I think they're canvas seat covers, mesh floor to suit the 270 degree awning, and one of those laser cut steel tables that goes off the back of the drawer, plus eBay snorkel. I'll link it down in the description. It wasn't the absolute cheapest one, but it's just, it wasn't the absolute cheapest one. I think it's a tough terrain. Just a standard plastic snorkel, so. Oh, and also, and also got a carb builders variable Raptor spray gun and two litres of black raptor so hopefully get into it and get the bonnet done as well so yeah, heaps to get done let's get into it first step is to cut out the template on the dotted line the hole saw all i want is the center of the hole so i can mark where the center drill goes in the hole saw righto let's line this up and tape it on line up with left of fender line up with top of fender Yeah, it looks right. Pass the point on over time. I own two complete Sutton hole saw kits, and none of them have a 95mm hole saw that this requires. Cost me another 45 bucks. Nothing to see here. those burrs and put some touch-up paint on there. So you'll notice the snorkel fitment video stopped all of a sudden. We won't talk about what I had to do to get it to fit. So um, yeah, don't buy eBay snorkels. I said I was gonna link this one. I'm not linking shit that I probably wouldn't buy again. What happened with it was there's a little like a spigot inside this bit that goes on the car and then on the tube that goes inside of it there's another little matching spigot and you've got to put like a rubber tube goes over it with some hose clamps. I'm sure I got it right and I couldn't figure out any other way that to do it but it seems like those two spigots are too too long and when they, they touch together at the end and it leaves this sitting proud of the guard. You can't move it any further on the inside because the elbow on the inside that goes to the airbox hits hard up against a moulding on the inner guard. So there's no other room to move it. I could be wrong, but I'm 99% sure I'm not. So what I had to do was guesstimate how much it was out by and got a timber saw and trimmed down both spigots to get it to fit. And you can see here now that it's actually clearance on the guard fine. So currently into day three of the Cape trip because um, videoing just turned to chaos trying to pack. So. That's what happened with the snorkel. Let's get back to it. Tonight I'm making a start on the black raptor paint on the bonnet. And get rid of this cooked paint. The bonnet's already off. Sitting on some trestles. Take these other accessories off. And then, then I'm just gonna hook into it with some paint stripper to get most of it off. Wash it all down. And then probably get it consistent with a orbital sander. It's a new one I bought. I've got an old one up here, but it's cooked. So I went and just, just went to another one. So yeah, let's do it. Halfway through, did out the bonnet just to show the difference. 
get the rest of this sanded. I don't know if I need to hit it with some rust converter. Might be alright. Let's see how we go. Time to have a crack at actually spraying the Black Raptor. Primer's all ready to go. Looks good. Got the variable nozzle gun from Car Builders. Heaps cheaper than the other one. Got to set the compressor up to four bar, three to four bar pressure. Adjust the nozzle, spray some test patterns and see how we go. Got the compressor set to four bar, which is what it says to have it at. Now mix this up. Spray some test patterns on a bit of cardboard. See what the text looks like. It says it's got a 60 minute flash off time, so it's now an hour later. Had a couple of beers. Try and do a second coat. your hands and acetone to let you know where any little cuts are. So it's on, two coats, a little bit thicker than I would like. It says you don't have to thin it, but I would have thinned it. If you're going to do it and you want a fine texture, use the... What is it? I've only got enamel thinners, you need the other one. You need uh, urethane thinners. So what I'll do, two coats I'll do for now, go to the cape. When I come back, I'll scuff it down with the red pad. And when I do the car, I'll do another coat on that and I'll thin it. That'll be right. It's a bed liner. I don't think you can really go wrong. It looks pretty good. It looks better than a cook bonnet that looked like it had an engine fire. So I'll let that go off. Let it dry for an hour. I might try and get it in the shed out of the rain. If it rains. Let it go off overnight and then refit it tomorrow, see what it looks like. Thanks for watching if you made it this far. We're currently into day three of the Cape trip. Packing the car turned absolute chaos, stressed me right out, so I didn't end up filming the rest of it. That's what happens. I've never camped this out of the car before. This new setup is working really good. We're starting to get it dialed in with Bailey's help. Just figuring out what sequence we set things up. The King's 270 awning floor meshy thing. Goes all right. I'll do a separate video on that. And the King's table and I'll do a continuation of the King's Awning, still in one piece. So yeah, we're currently just north of Cohen, camping at um, South Bend Creek, I think it is. So yeah, stick around. I'm trying to edit all the footage I've taken over the first couple of days. We've done the part of the Kreb track. We 
and then went up past Cape Tribulation. We've been to Lyons Den, and now we're onto here, still heading north. So um, yeah, if you want to see that, subscribe, all that shit. I don't need to say that. And that's it. On with the trip. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.